point soon it's gonna have to come out <clears throat> I've kept one of these on me since 05 um, whether it's a keychain recorder or a pen because most predators would check your phone and once the sexual harassment started I was like well I need to I, I gotta protect me cause I'm saying no and I don't want this person as powerful as they are to try to get in the way of my work so I started recording so I have them offering me money to take my clothes off. I have recordings when I wasn't working with them or for them. Um, I have recordings of them confessing that, you know, the other guys that they have on the payroll, all of the above. Um, and the difference is the wonderful thing about confidentiality agreements and non-disclosure agreements is that they can't prevent you from turning all of those things over to the police because sexual harassment is a crime. Attempted sexual assault is a felony. Welcome everyone to the LifeScope channel. On your way in, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I listened to the whole Instagram clip by Christian Keys and I applaud him for speaking on something that most men wouldn't talk about. First off, it seems like once again Holly weirdos or predators are about to be revealed and I feel like that information needs to be put out there because people should be able to go to work without being harassed or harmed. Stuff like this does get me riled up a little bit because people really think it's just so easy for Christian Keys to drop the names of everyone who assaulted him. Let me say this, most people are not born brave. Meaning, unless you are the one, you may not know what you will do if you are in a certain situation. Hey guys, I'm looking at all the comments online regarding the bombshell that Christian Keys dropped. He didn't say the names. People are assuming who it is. Uh, there's actually two people that I know of. Um, when are y'all going to stop blaming the victims? I'm so sick and tired of it. This is why people don't come forward and they usually take things to their grave and have drinking problems, drug problems, psychological problems, relationship problems. They struggle with the business. They are depressed. They are distraught. They are traumatized. And then when they do find the, the, the courage to, to step forward and take step one to say something about it, what's the first thing people want to say? Oh, you looking for attention. It's a money grab. Have you ever been raped? Have you ever been sexually assaulted? Have you ever been forced into a position you didn't want to be in? Has anyone ever dangled your whole livelihood in front of your face and in exchange for favors and you did not want to go do that and you didn't? Then shut up! Unfortunately, some of us have a bad habit of automatically assuming everything is for a money grab. Christian Keyes said that he purposely let the statue of limitations expire because he knew that people will come at him with that. Now, for the most part, it seems that Keyes has always been sincere. He lets it be known that he is a Christian, and as far as I know, there wasn't any wild allegations or rumors about him out. So, it's not hard at all to believe that men and women were trying to proposition or assault him. I saw comments where some people are saying, why doesn't Christian just go to the police? Either drop the names or shut up, and why did it take 15 years to say something? I will not be shamed. I did nothing wrong. And you have to keep telling yourself that until you believe it. And I believed it because the thing is, the, the perpetrator did all the wrong things. Yeah. And I decided I was not going to hold on to the shame. And all of a sudden, I was free. And when you don't have shame, you are free. And that's the, it's literally the instructions I was given, and I've seen it affect people in a positive way and it, it, it definitely definitely helped me to get through all of this and I remember you saying that 
you know, going through that experience and talking about it led other people to realize where their lines had been crossed in the past. Did you, after experiencing sexual assault, realize, okay, now I'm flashing back to this incident, that incident, that made me uncomfortable. Did any, did it trigger any memories for you? Oh, the, the, the best words you just said there was trigger. Um, it was a trigger. You recently revealed you were sexually assaulted by a director. Well... Why did you reveal it? It was just something that I... Female director? No, it wasn't. Male director? <laughs> no, I, that, I wouldn't have considered that an, an assault. <laughs> but there was, um, you know, this stuff that came out recently about Harvey Weinstein. I mean, first of all, I mean, uh, I think I never knew that he was, a, you know... Like he was a rapist. I, I know well, I didn't know that. I know. I mean, I, mean, I, th I think it's been it's very common knowledge that people producers can be pigs and piggish, and you know that would be hitting on women or or, or being, um, you know, cheating on your wife. That's what I would consider being piggish, not not the sexual assault. A guy who's you know now he's going to have to like. You know, the next time he goes into Starbucks, he's going to have to, like, call the police and, like, register. I'm going to Starbucks to get some, you know. So, um, but, like, what happens is with actors, you're in a vulnerable situation. You know, you're in a vulnerable place. You're trying to get a job. And there's people who, and it's not just actors. It's any any men in positions of power who could use that right. power to all about abuse power. it. And, you know, um, so when you I was... You looking for a job? When I was a young actor... Yeah, I was uh, asked to go to a, a hotel room of a, of a director. It was a famous director. And um, I didn't think anything weird by it because it never thing had ever happened to me. And so I went um, <clears throat> and he was in his robe. I still didn't think it was weird. Well, he probably just came out of the shower or whatever. And then he asked me to do, um, you know, uh, to do the scene and then crawl on my belly around it. And then it, it got to a weird place. I wanted to play those short videos so you all can hear from at least two men that are telling us how they felt in their uncomfortable moments that led to harassment. Now I'm sure for most of us we will say, oh if that was me I would have punched the guy in the face if he grabbed on me or made me roll around on the floor for a part in a movie. And maybe most of you would fight without any hesitation. It seems to me that Christian Keys vented on Instagram because not only could he not take the bullshit anymore, but also he may be getting closer to turning over his evidence. And who are we to get impatient with a victim to the point where we are telling him to hurry up and say who it is? If you ever really talk to a victim, you would know they have to come forward when they are ready. First of all, they have to process what happened to them. And you could see from Christian Key's video, it appears that he really wrestled with not coming forth sooner and not knocking the guy out. Especially since that same predator continuously kept coming at him over the years. Although I agree that coming forward can possibly prevent another incident from happening, I don't want to chastise a victim for not doing so. But people are going to criticize him no matter what he decides to do. So, in his nearly hour-long video, Key said that a man tried to climb into bed with him in a room when he was drunk at a party. He continued on by saying that a female actress massaged his equipment and that a man offered him $100,000 to undress. Now sometimes we in the general public think of movie stars as living a glamorous life when in reality they aren't getting paid enough, Hollywood is small, and there is rampant abuse among broken people. Have you all noticed that there seems to be more than a few actors or entertainers that have childhood trauma stories? I'm pointing this out because when I listen to Christian Keyes say he was a foster child, and suffered abuse from a foster parent, his reaction made a little more sense to me. Also, just going down the conspiracy hole for a minute, if people in the movie business end up dead after speaking on certain things, then you would think that Keyes is trying to tread more carefully. Mrs. Keyes was incredibly abusive. Um, I mean, bat, hammer, broomstick, saucepan, bottle, um, when the belt didn't, when it wasn't as effective as she wanted, when it didn't make it, make us 
scream loud enough, she would hold the leather side and beat us with the belt buckle. It gets worse. Um, but it was that kind of environment between 8 and 12. So by 9, I started running away. By 10, I was pretty good. By 11, I was a professional runaway. Um, I could stay on the streets for a week or two at a time. I knew how to sleep behind the, the bleachers in the middle school, how to sneak in and, and you know, bomb a bite of uh, a friend's lunch in the cafeteria or go through the garbage and see what they didn't eat, um, hit the garbage at McDonald's to eat or steal from Farmer Jack's or Kmart. Um, I got good at that too, unfortunately, but I had to eat. So, um, so that's what kind of, she adopted me when I was six. Um, and then, but the, the rough years, the beating started at eight and I just kept running away, kept running away. And finally they believed me. Um, Child Protective Services, man, they, they dropped the ball probably a dozen times. Neighbors complained, you know, cause she would have, as a punishment, she made me walk down the street naked in the rain at nine years old. I started this video a few days ago when it happened and I wasn't able to finish it then, but I'm glad I waited because I wouldn't have come across the child abuse information until after the fact. And I feel it's important to add his background because some childhood triggers last a lifetime and have a way of being acted out. So I believe he was assaulted and hopefully he can get some type of justice if that's what he seeks. But now I want to shift the conversation just a little bit to one of the big trends that hit Twitter, also known as X, on yesterday. Have you ever been swallowed up? Have you gone through a time of swallow? Get out my face with that. Get out my face with that crap. Discussions on social media have been triggered by a startling rumor about Pastor T.D. Jakes being connected to the Sean Diddy Combs' alleged sexual assault. According to a TikTok video uploaded by user Just Nini on December 20th, yesterday, Cassie allegedly gave federal authorities evidence including Kim Porter's burner phone. According to the evidence, Combs's longtime friend and Christian preacher T.D. Jakes is implicated. So allegedly, Cassie has turned over evidence to the feds. Yes, to the feds. She has turned over videotapes, a USB drive, and Kim Porter's burner phone. Now, there is also an alleged email out saying a plethora of other things that include T.D. Jakes with Diddy. I'm gonna let y'all listen to it. I'm not finna say nothing else. There's here, yo bro, Cassie has turned over substantial amounts of evidence to the feds. I'm told that after Cassie had a long conversation with Blank, I have to protect this person. They're going through a lot right now. And her lawyers, she finally was convinced to give up the videotapes and audio recordings that contain footage of S parties and other private gatherings that feature some pretty powerful and prominent people. And get this, she even gave up a burner phone and USBs that belong to Kim Porter with incriminating evidence against Diddy. I'm told that there are a slew of artists, politicians, and entertainers that are about to be exposed and arrested for H10. I'm paraphrasing there, okay? Mm -hmm. H10. I'm told that Cassie's husband played a significant role in getting Cassie to turn over the evidence. It's to my understanding that Cassie felt that by exposing the truth, it would also make her look like a filthy more. And I'm paraphrasing there because some of the videos she turned in, it shows her getting number one on number one. OK, guys, I'm paraphrasing again and committing more disgusting acts that she was forced to do. I'm also told that multiple male escorts corroborated the fact that T.D. Jakes have slept with multiple men at Diddy's parties and abroad. And they refer to him as being a power bottom. Wow. It's also been said that a young male has acquired a lawyer to represent him as he is set to sue Jakes for an incident that took place when he was just years old. It's been said that the young man was forced to perform sloppy toppy. And I'm paraphrasing here, guys. You can actually put two and two together to understand what I'm trying to say. Oh. It's been said that the man's family were members of the Potter's house, but left the church in 2015. According to multiple church insiders, the parents were paid off to keep quiet. The guy's a grown man mm -hmm. now and is seeking his own justice. It's been said that the young man doesn't even deal with his parents even to this day because they took hush money. According to Pastor Blank, and I have to protect this pastor, Bishop Jakes is about to get railroaded and all of his dirt will be exposed. That's why the bishop has quietly lawyered up. He sees his fall from grace coming. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> just don't look good for nobody. And when I say nobody, I mean nobody. Hollywood is being turned upside down. Jeffrey Epstein's list is going to come out. If this is actually true, this list is going to come out. And we already know T.D. Jakes is caught up with the other shit, allegedly being the person that is um messing with Christian Keys. Everybody's saying it's either allegedly T.D. Jakes or allegedly Tyler Perry. It's either one of them, but... Oh my God, if this is true, buckle up. Because next year, 2024, y'all better get y'all bingo cards out because it's going to get real. Now, as always, it's easy to get swept up in all of the madness that is coming out. Until everything is officially confirmed, we don't know if this is true or not. But I will say this, rumors have been circulating about T.D. Jakes for years. To top it off, I had to add this information not just because it's an interesting update to the Diddy effect, but because many people are speculating that either Tyler Perry or T.D. Jakes could be the billionaire Christian Keys was talking about. Again, all of this information regarding T.D. Jakes that came out hasn't been confirmed as true. It's going to be crazy to see how or if the pastor is going to have his team put out a statement regarding this. I'm going to end with this. No matter how high up the mountain you think you are, if you got skeletons in the closet, the bones have a way of knocking you down. So to any victim, don't be discouraged and please recognize there is power in telling your story. Let me know what you think. Until next time.